Hey everyone, I'm Jesse Lang coming to you from Ferrari Beverly Hills because less than two months after the world lost automotive icon Carol Shelby, the industry has lost another great. Sergio Pininfarina, one of Italy's most important and most prolific automotive designers, has died at the age of 85. Although he's known for designing the elegant bodies of some of the most popular cars ever made by Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, Maserati, and Fiat, his accomplishments did not end there. And today, we're taking a look back at the diversity and depth of his storied career. Born the son of a carriage maker, Pininfarina carried forth his father's legacy of and love for Italian automotive design. His father, Battista Pininfarina, began a career at a coach building firm when he was just 13 years old, and by age 17, had begun designing professionally on his own. By 1930, he founded his own coach building company and quickly distinguished himself as a unique artist by breaking away from the curvy, ornate traditions of the 1930s in favor of designs that utilized straight, clean lines. The simplicity in his car bodies was not only attractive, but was also easier to produce and it attracted the attention of such companies as Fiat, Alfa Romeo, and Ferrari. In 1950, with Batista's business gaining international interest and increasing demand, he invited his son Sergio to join his company. Sergio, who had recently graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering, quickly became involved in all aspects of the business, from designing car bodies to implementing manufacturing techniques and testing marketing ideas. Like his father, he had a passion for forward-looking technology, and within a short time, established himself as a strong visionary with boldly creative impulses. In 1960, Sergio became general manager of his father's firm, and one year later also became managing director. When his father died in 1966, he took over as chairman of the company, and his rise to stardom began. His first major success came with a deal he made with Ferrari. Confident that a new consumer market was burgeoning, Sergio convinced Ferrari to allow him to design two auto body prototypes for a new 12-cylinder race car quality vehicle. The first, the 250 GTO, was an extremely expensive race car that only the rich and the famous could afford. The second car, the 250 GTE, was a slightly powered down version of the original and still carried a hefty price tag. Yet despite that it cost $15,000, which was a large sum of money in the 1960s, it became one of Ferrari's best sellers and led to one of Sergio's best known designs, the Dino series of mid-engine cars. Produced between 1968 and 1976, the Dino series became a signature of Italian sports car design. And serving as a direct competitor of the new Porsche 911, it launched Ferrari and Pininfarina into the mass market car business. For more than half a century, Sergio maintained a working relationship with Ferrari, a role that's rumored to have come with the responsibility of managing the very large egos of temperamental designers in addition to producing automotive design concepts, and he sat on the Ferrari board of directors from 1969 to 2011. I will best remember him saying, yes, uh, your point is absolutely correct. However, let me tell you that when we start designing this, we were thinking about, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, and for sure at the end of the whole conversation, it will bring you around uh, to see his point of view about the design. Over the years, while still serving as a design leader at Ferrari, Sergio expanded his reach and influence by building relationships with and producing designs for car makers such as Alfa Romeo, Fiat, Maserati, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Volvo, Mitsubishi, and Peugeot. Even the American-made 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Rondinet and the 1986 Cadillac Alante bore his name. Among the things that made his expansion possible was Sergio's decision to move the Pininfarina company into custom short-run manufacturing. This allowed him to create a source of revenue beyond design and coach building and to construct modern facilities where designers could thrive while maintaining the brand's level of excellence, as represented by the famous F and Crown logo. The success of models like the Alfa Romeo Giulia and the Fiat 124 Spider became important achievements, and by the mid-1980s, his firm was designing prototypes for models that sold about 50,000 units a year, compared to the roughly 500 units sold in the early 1960s. With his success, Sergio had the freedom not only to design high-end and even one-of-a-kind vehicles for the extremely wealthy, but also the ability to produce more affordable cars. While he was proud of the work he did with upscale automakers, he often expressed even greater pride in the designs he produced for Mitsubishi and Peugeot because they allowed him to bring more stylish automobiles to a wider, more mainstream audience. Though his design portfolio is voluminous, the general public has become familiar with many models thanks in part to popular culture. 
The iconic 1984 Ferrari Testarossa, for example, was featured in popular television series like Murder, She Wrote and Miami Vice, as well as in films like The Stepford Wives and Ghost. And who could forget the 1961 Ferrari 250 GT from Ferris Bueller's Day Off? In fact, to give you a sense of this value this ultra-rare roadster possessed, only 100 of these cars were ever made and were so expensive that Hollywood filmmakers couldn't afford to purchase one only to destroy it at the end of the movie, so they actually made a replica instead. Through and through, Sergio's designs influenced not only popular culture, but also the human imagination and the automotive industry at large. But his accomplishments outside the realm of automotive design and manufacturing were nearly just as staggering. As a European industrialist who was well respected by colleagues, he was able to combine his hands-on industry experience with his political acumen and served as a member of the European Parliament for over a decade. In 2005, he was made a life senator by the Italian state and over the years was also awarded four honorary degrees. And all the while, he continued designing cars well into his 70s with the 2003 Maserati Quattroporta and the 2004 Ferrari Scaglietti being some of the last concepts he brought to life. He was uh, an incredible businessman. He was also president of the Conf Industry, which is the, at one point, the association of all the industrialists in Italy. He was uh, a family man. He put his family in front of uh, business, in front of anything else. And he was uh, a very remarkable, you know, person, you know, in many capacity. With a relentless drive to create, Sergio Pininfarina bestowed on the motoring world an incredible level of industrialism, and through his unique collaborations with diverse automotive entities, forged a personal empire that left the industry forever changed. The loss of this automotive legend is a grievous one, and begs the question, who are the designers of today whom we'll later look back on with reverence? Who will be spoken of in similar terms 50 years from now? Let me know what you think on our message boards. That's it for this edition of Wide Open Throttle. Special thanks to Ferrari Beverly Hills. I'm Jesse Lang, and I'll see you next week.